Here we go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Trench Grenade channel. I am your host, the average Arctic warfare enjoyer that your mom said that we have at home. Thanks for watching. Guys, the purpose of today's video is I'm going to teach you how to survive uh, and thrive in an Arctic environment uh, when trying to conduct operations against your enemies in the Minecraft server, okay? The definition of Arctic warfare, we're not talking above freezing, we're talking, we're talking about below zero, okay? Continuous operations, uh, below freezing for sure, but more specifically below zero. And if you're living in the desert and watching this video, let me know down in the comments, all you desert dwellers, leave some sort of desert uh, environment emoji or a cactus if you're watching this purely for the entertainment and the knowledge and no application, okay? Uh, for the rest of you, leave some sort of winter Arctic emoji down below and let me know where you're gonna apply this in your Minecraft server. Real quick guys, Patreon, it's $5 a month. It gets you access to our Discord server where you can stay up late with all the boys and talk about, and me, and talk about all your favorite Arctic uh, warfare strategies, okay? Um, Guys, it's less than a cup of coffee a month. It's five bucks. Consider going over there, helping out the channel if you want to continue seeing stuff like this and range content. Um, Instagram, it's a thing. It's where I lift weights. Head on over to the Instagram channel. Check it out. It's where I post some behind the scenes stuff. And yeah, whatever. Uh, whatever else I forgot to mention. Cool. Okay. Uh, we already defined it. Guys, story time. Uh, we were going to do, we were in Alaska and I was a weapon squad leader, and we were gonna do, we were finishing the very last iteration of live fire exercises, so we tore down our Akio tent, which is, uh, it's an Arctic tent, uh, kind of, I mean, they're, they're typically coated in JPA in one little match will light them up, that's why you do rollout drills. If you know what I'm talking about, all my Arctic paratroopers, let me know. Uh, shout out to 1G. But with that being said, guys, we were sitting there, we were waiting, uh, to get trans to the SP point. The, most of the platoon had already moved out with the platoon leader and we're standing here waiting for vehicles to come pick us up to move us to the actual location of the start point. The Akio tents had already been moved out, obviously, and we were sitting there with very, very minimal equipment uh, on, just our level five top and bottom with silk top and bottom underneath and our fighting equipment and our VB boots and our mittens. And we were absolutely suffering it was the coldest i've ever been in my entire life every second felt like an hour guys i thought we were gonna die i'm not even gonna lie to you it was the coldest i've ever freaking been in my life so try to use some of these tips and tricks that i've learned along the way uh during my three years in a uh, air arctic airborne environment okay um obviously i've been doing this job in the infantry for 11 years now but i spent three years with 425 up in alaska um learning these tips okay water Water, camelbacks. Camelbacks are absolutely useless. Don't try to bring a camelback. Um, your water source, I recommend Nalgene bottles. And for your water, you wanna turn them upside down and you need to constantly be rotating um, them in and out of, from inside your uh, level five jacket. You wanna drape your level five jacket over the top or some, something, because your body is what's gonna actually thaw out your water. It's easy to die in an Arctic environment from dehydration uh, due to that. So make sure your water, don't use a camelback, and put your Nalgene bottle in some area where you can continuously rotate them. Another thing on water, um, you're going to need a jet boil. You will die in an Arctic environment if you don't have a jet boil. Regular MREs are useless in, a, in an Arctic environment. So you need to have a jet boil with extra fuel canisters and you need to know how to use it in a hurry because you're going to need to boil snow. And as most of you guys know, just if you boil a whole thing of snow, it only, it goes down to like a tiny, tiny bit of water. So you have to continuously boil snow. It's horrible. Okay. So uh, camelbacks are useless. Use Nalgene. Keep them rotated. You're going to need a jet boil and you're going to need to continuously be boiling water. It's an implied task at all times or else your troopers will literally die. Also, if you cannot make a fire in an Arctic environment because the enemy will kill you, but if you have an Akio tent or some sort of stove, you need to continuously be rotating your troopers' uh, Nalgene bottles around to even get it a little bit thawed so that way they can continue drinking water. Water is a serious, serious problem in an Arctic environment. Throw your camel back away if you're gonna go fight in the Arctic. Um, snow, snow can kill you. Um, you need to have a hood on your level five jacket. The only time you wear a hood is if you're gonna go through a wooded environment uh, because snow falling obviously down from the trees on your head and neck will kill you, okay? Um, obviously, if you get wet, if you get wet, you're gonna be miserable and if you get wet, you're gonna die, right? So uh, don't get wet, uh, snow will kill you. Uh, snow blindness will kill you. You need to have sunglasses, you need to have sunscreen. Uh, snow blindness can kill you, it can blind you, 
Um, if you can't see, you can't fight, and you need to have a hood on your level five jacket and on your soft shell jacket. That way, when you're walking through the woods, uh, you can actually utilize it. Over whites. Over whites are just like sheets, okay? You need to put one over your uh, rucksack and you need to have over white pants. You do not wear over white jackets because if you look at the wood line, what you're gonna see is snow, you're gonna see snow, then you're gonna see trees. So think about it, that is your body. So you wear over white pants, but you wear a regular camouflage jacket like multi-cam, okay? That way you actually blend in. Uh, and then your reason you have an over white cover on your rucksack or your assault pack, so that when you put it down, it it gets blended in, okay? So you lose your rock. That's why you mark it with a GPS or you mark it on your map, okay? Um, guys, I'm just throwing a ton of information at you, at you. If you think this information is worth $5 a month, consider becoming a member of the Patreon so I can get you in the Discord. Okay, um, yeah, so that's the use of overwhites. Uh, anyone who's done this job for a minute knows that overwhites very quickly turn into over yellows, okay? Because uh, in an Arctic environment, you don't want to spend long uh, urinating, okay? So it's disgusting, I get it, but don't don't go out there and try to buy the most expensive overwhites. Just get some cheapo uh, army surplus ones because you're gonna be literally peeing on them and you're gonna waste money, okay? Um, been there, done that. Fuel, Fu uh, fuel is the key to survival, but here's the thing. Fuel freezes at a different rate than water. So if you get fuel on your, at all, you're gonna die. So you need to be very, very careful when you're pouring fuel. If fuel gets on your pants, if it gets on your clothes at all, you cannot be in an Arctic environment, you will die. Fuel does not freeze at the same temperature as water. That means it will physically burn you and kill you, okay? Uh, as it attempts to try to freeze uh, against your body, it's gonna do really, really bad things. So fuel uh, will kill you, you need a ton of it. Um, your fuel canisters for your jet boil, you need to have extras, okay? I've seen crazy things happen and it's not gonna last as long as you think. And remember, you're gonna need that jet boil to literally make water and literally your regular MREs are useless, so you're gonna need to constantly be boiling water for your mountain house meals, it's horrible. Arct fighting in the Arctic sucks, guys. Um, so fuel, fuel is extremely dangerous, okay? Do not get it on your body, it will kill you. Um, sunglasses, we already talked about it. You need to have good sunglasses, okay? Invest, Oakley, get some Oakleys or whatever, but get some sort of glasses that you can wear day in and day out, because in an Arctic environment, you're gonna wear them all the time and you're gonna sunburn. So you need to get sunscreen if you're gonna use some, actually, what, I never even used sunscreen. What I always did is just kept my neck gaiter on. But here's the thing about your balaclava or your uh, neck gaiter. You have to always have it on because if you take it off and your, your nose will freeze, you can't recover it because that's how you're gonna get frostbite. So if you need to always have your neck gaiter on or your balaclava on, uh, but here's the thing. Remember, it's either always uncovered or always covered. You can never go back and cover your nose because then you're gonna get frostbite, okay? Um, also, when firing your rifle, you need to make sure you don't put your face directly on your weapon because your face, if you look at pictures I probably have on the channel, on the Instagram, my face got frostbite because I put my face in a hurry, boom, on the weapon and it froze, okay? Repeated contact to that frozen weapon, your face will literally freeze and uh, you'll get frostbite, okay? So you need to always have your bullet lava or neck gator on or I'm telling you guys, you're gonna die, literally. Um, okay, uh, so sunglasses, I I recommend just doing the neck gator thing because a lot, the freezing rates of uh, some sunscreen can kill you as well. I'm just remembering this. It's all, it's all coming back as a wave to me myself. So be very careful using sunscreen. I recommend just, you need to have a bolly on anyway. When you're outdoors, you should always have a fleece cap on and a ball glove on. Uh, and when you begin moving, that's when you take the fleece cap only off, but keep the ball glove on because you will literally die. Layers. Okay, so say you're doing a movement, and we're going to talk about this in a second. This is the direction of travel. Um, layers. Guys, it sounds crazy, but you need to have your marshmallow suit or your level seven, uh, your thick uh, puffy jacket all stuffed into like one sleeve so stuff the entire jacket into one sleeve and have that on the top of your ruck or your assault pack the only thing you should be moving in is silks silk top and bottom and level five or soft shell top and bottom and your balaclava your gloves and your beanie or your helmet right the reason is you will die if you get too hot you will die okay so if you start sweating you will die so it's 
the Arctic will kill you guys. So if you're moving with too much gear on, you're going to die. If you're moving uh, uh, with too little gear on, you're going to die. So what I recommend and what we did was the silky top and the silky bottom and soft shell top, soft shell bottom, obviously all your combat equipment, uh, contact gloves, so just regular gloves, your mittens up front, so you can put your mittens, your hands in your mittens. You should always have mittens in an Arctic environment, so two sets of gloves, contact gloves and mittens, and then your ball of lava and your fleece cap, because guys, if you move in too much gear, you'll die. But the second you stop moving, the second, the instant you stop moving, once security is set, everybody should be putting on their level seven or their puffy suit, because you'll die if you start, if you were sweating, uh, during the movement or during the ruck, now you're just going to freeze to death when you get there. Um, so if you have more questions, ask in the comments. If I don't get to your question, it's probably because uh, I don't have time. So you need to check out the Patreon. Okay, uh, that, that covers layers. I could go on about that forever. Uh, have extra gloves, have extra socks. You need to have merino wool socks, very thick uh, socks, guys. Okay, wool socks. They have to be wool. Uh, yak tracks. If you don't know what yak tracks are or snowshoes, you need to have them. Because you cannot break brush or break uh, uh, break snow or break track forever, you will literally die. If you're trying to break uh, break brush or break, I'm trying to remember what. Uh, uh, basically, you're trying to break through the snow with regular boots, you'll die. Okay, so you need to have yak tracks and snowshoes accessible, and you also need to have skis accessible. Okay, um, yes, it's a lot of stuff, but you, without skis and snowshoes, you'll die. So you need to learn how to ski if you want to fight in an Arctic uh, environment. I'm not talking about civilian skis. I'm talking about like military skis, okay? I know it sounds crazy. Uh, another thing you're going to need is going to be uh, you need um, marshmallow boots or no, what are they called? Uh, the Mickey Mouse boots, the big white boots. You're going to need those if you're going to want to survive in an Arctic environment. If you can't get those, uh, you can get regular Arctic or cold weather boots, like specifically made, and then you can get um, gaiters, right, that go around your ankles. But I'm telling you right now, nothing beats the, uh, they're really uncomfortable, but they'll save your life. The big, uh, I think we called them uh, Mickey Mouse boots, the big white boots, okay? The VB boots, vapor barrier boots, uh, VB, vapor barrier boots, okay? Um, that's what we wore, and they are really uncomfortable, but they'll save your life. Uh, food. You need to have a ton of like peanut butter or something, peanut butter packets in your cargo pocket, keeping it just warm enough to be able to eat in a hurry because you're going to need to constantly be eating in an Arctic environment or you're going to die. Okay, so you need to have some sort of peanut butter or cheese spreads in your pockets and then your actual food is a pain in the ass because you're not going to be able to heat it up because remember water is an issue for your mountain house meals and that's the only thing you can eat in an Arctic environment is a mountain house meal. Um, cause any, everything else freezes guys. So you have to use boiling water in your mountain house and it's amazing, but guess what? You're going to be so dehydrated. You're going to literally want to die. So good luck. But yeah, food, you can't use regular MREs. You can't use regular food. The only thing you can eat in an Arctic environment is mountain house. Okay. Uh, tortillas too uh, are good. If you can keep them warm, you can use tortillas to plus up, uh, the carbohydrates. Okay. So you can try to keep uh, tortillas warm. Uh, just enough to not be frozen to put it in like in the mountain house or whatever for some extra carbs you're going to need it uh, sugars are huge uh, any sort of sugar uh, gel packs that you can keep thawed are huge uh, but just accept the fact that you're going to come out of an arctic environment losing all your gains and you'll probably die um, tent you need to have an Occhio tent or some sort of shelter uh, you, when you're setting up your tank you have to dig all the way down to the ground and you can't have any uh, snow below you because that snow is going to turn to ice and you're going to die in your sleep. Okay, so you need to have some sort of tent or shelter. I'm not going to go too crazy into the tent and shelter because that's a whole nother video. But just know uh, Occhios are a pain in the ass. Uh, Arctic tents are a pain in the ass. And uh, just know you have to dig all the way down to the ground. If you even leave a tiny bit of uh, snow, that snow turns to water and this water turns to ice. And if you're laying on a sheet of ice, which I have done many of times i'm telling you you'd rather just be dead it's so miserable your core temperature is going to be so low you're not going to want to get out of your sleeping bag or your sleep system and then when you do get out you're going to be at such a low temperature that if you don't start moving you're going to die um so just keep that in mind shovels you need to have shovels accessible um weapons i want to talk about weapons uh or let's talk about security first okay but you need to have additional shovel security guys Security is horrible and doing operations is horrible because you have to constantly, uh, say you're in a patrol base, right? 
You have to have an inner track and an outer track. If you want a second video for Arctic spicy camping or Arctic patrol base operations, let me know. But you have to have an inner track and an outer track and you have to constantly, say you have your tents on the inside, you have to constantly be rotating out the sentries or they'll freeze to death. And no one wants to get out of their sleeping bag. And the Ar uh, Arctic tents are tiny, okay? And you can't stand up in them because they're too short and they're extremely cramped and you're laying on ice. And I'm telling you guys, I'm just thinking back to this. It was the worst time of my, uh, it was the best time of worst times because you laugh the hardest, but you're so miserable, guys. Um, but that's a whole other video. If you want a spicy camping video, let me know um, for Arctic camping. But yeah. Okay. Um, casualties. If you get shot, uh, I'm just going to expedite this in a, a really quick manner. If you get shot in an Arctic environment, your odds of uh, dying are extremely high. You're probably not going to make it. Uh, that's a whole other video in itself. But just know if you get shot in an Arctic environment, you're probably going to die. Security. Just remember to rotate out your sentries. Um, uh, on sentry guard because they're probably going to freeze to death. Uh, literally, like they'll freeze to death sitting there or standing there, literally. Okay. Uh, never lay down either. Never stop moving in an Arctic environment. You will freeze to death. Uh, weapons. Never bring a weapon. Okay. One, your weapons should be completely dry. No CLP at all. If you have any sort of lubricant on your weapon, it's going to freeze solid and be useless. Run your M4 or your whatever rifle you're running completely bone dry if you have law. Um, it's an Arctic uh, lubricant. If you have some Army uh, Arctic lubricant, also known as Law, then you can use that. But I always ran my M4 completely bone stock and never had any issues, or bone dry, uh, never had any issues. My ACOG never had any issues surviving. But the EOTEX and the Aimpoints sometimes have issues. The Aimpoints are pretty good, um, but the EOTEX tended to freeze a lot. And then the ACOG uh, was the best in my experience, okay, for as far as optics go. Um, but uh, batteries, dude, batteries are going to die so quick. God help you if you have a radio or a Garmin. The batteries are going to die so quick and so fast. Or it makes technology almost useless. So you're going to have to carry a ton of batteries. But just remember, don't bring your weapon inside the tent ever. Never bring your weapon inside the tent. It will physically crack in half from, th from freezing and unfreezing so frequently and negative 25, negative 20 degree weather, uh, your weapon will physically fall apart. It'll crack in half, okay? So leave it outside the tent. Um, uh, that's a whole nother video, but leave it outside the tent. Everyone's weapons should be outside the tent, even your handguns. If you, if you bring your weapons in and out of the tent, they will break. They will physically crack and break, okay? Uh, and, they, and they'll rust up as well. Like, it's just, leave them outside the tent, okay? Uh, that metal becomes so brittle, it ruins them, okay? So they have to put a, a line of 550 cord and lean the weapons against the line of 550 cord. You get under attack, everyone has to run out of the tent and grab their weapons because if you bring them in the tent, they're either going to rust and freeze and then unfreeze and they're going to break or literally become useless based on the amount of rust because the condensation, it's, it's wild. Just leave them outside the tent, trust me. Uh, okay, guys, uh, last thing. If this is your lead team, okay, and this is your trail team, and these are the guys that are, these are the four soldiers that are carrying your Arctic or dragging your Arctic tent, you need to rotate your from your lead, okay, because these guys are the most tired, these guys are the least tired. So it goes from lead to trail, from trail to dragging, from dragging to lead, and it just constantly rotates, because if you don't switch out every couple minutes, you're going to burn your people out and no one ever wants to volunteer to get off dragging the sled, but it's miserable, guys. And again, you're probably going to die. But if you want a longer, more detailed Arctic Warfare class, guys, let me know in the comments. Uh, if a few of you guys join the Patreon and go over there and give me $5 a month, I might just make a part two of Arctic Warfare considerations. Um, thanks for being here, guys. Please leave some sort of Arctic or desert emoji down below. Uh, let me know your guys' experience and let me know the coldest you have ever been in your entire life. I want to know what is the coldest, most miserable experience you ever had in your entire life. Um, but yeah, I look forward to reading your guys' comments. I'll see you guys over on the Patreon and Discord server. And until next time, this is going to be Trench Grenade, your average Arctic warfare fighter that your mom said that we have at home. Signing out. Cheers.